we have been opening up this concept um, that is shifting the way I think, and we are endeavoring to shift the way we all think, and it's based in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, Y'all should know that intimately, not intim intimately by now. It says that we are to imitate, be imitators of God. We are to be imitators of God. One thing, oh God, I don't like to say this with, with guests here, but one thing but us Bahamians, we good at copying. Oh God. We, we good. I, I remember, I was, I was just thinking about this, you know, right? I, I get on my little journey. I was just thinking about this. Remember when they started selling phone cards on the road? And, um, I mean, with all the roads in Nassau, like you would find six phone card vendors in one intersection. Like you one right cross from this one, this and that. We guess we got the gift of copy. Close bracket. Oh, Jesus. But I, I thank God this church breaking that trend, though. This ain't, this ain't my preaching, right? But I'm, go ahead and shout, I'm an originator. Yeah, originator. That means I create original things. Glory to God. Anyway, all right. That wasn't the message, but I had to throw that out there. Lord, there's so much copying going on. And, and, and we got the Holy Ghost, which is the, the, the seed of all creativity. Come on here. So we got to break out this box of just doing what somebody else do. And um, Lord God, you go, you, go to, you go to the same church, you get 29 dress stores selling the same dress. I mean, if you have a different, you could do a clothing store, but like go a different kind of direction, you know. Be creative. I get in trouble? Yeah. Because there's more in you than to see what somebody else is doing and you just go copy what they do. I'm trying. All right. Let's close that bracket. Close that bracket. Say this, I have the Holy Ghost. So creativity is in me. You got to know that. But you know what's nice? Sometimes we, are, we, we refuse to meditate. We refuse to think. We refuse to allow the Holy Spirit to create things in us. It's so much easier to see what you're doing than just copy it. Oh. Rather than talking to this father and saying, Father, what, what, what would you have me to do? What is the lane that you have ordained for me to walk in? And if you are still breathing, the youngest person here is one Lillian McPhee. And creativity is as alive in her as it is in my son. Because she has the spirit of creation on the inside of her. You know? So why she ain't selling that bread, I don't know. But I guess she, she don't need to make no money now. She just sell the bread and give it up. Um, hint, hint, your pastor need another bread. <laughs> but we need to allow that, that creative power that's in us to come out. All right, let's move on. So we should not be copying one another. We should be copying God. Now, the Bible says that we are to become imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. That is the posture of every believer. This will continue to be a recurring theme in this house because I believe it's going to define where God has called us to be as we move from this 12th year. I have not been preaching this um, and mentioning this, but it's been constantly on me by the Spirit of God that we are in year number 12. And 12 is the number of foundations. It's the number of establishment. That's why it is not strange that we purchase our property in the 12th year. It's consistent with this whole idea of 12, establishing, um, putting down foundation, um, and you can go through scripture and see the significance of the number 12. Uh, but as we are in this place, in this part of the journey called of Life Worship Center, the Holy Ghost says to me that we have to uh, adopt this mindset and move from just following God's 
instruction uh, to imitating his example, which means that we ought to do what God does. You have the power to do what God does because this will allow us to function with a greater level of influence in the earth. Say influence. influence. I want to talk about influence for a little bit. See, there is no room for us to be victims of the decisions made by others Monday through Friday, and then we shout on weekends about the power that we have. So people through the week are determining how we live our life, and then we come together on Sunday and we shout. When the Bible says in Genesis 1 and 28, we're supposed to have dominion. But the truth of the matter is the only place that the church has dominion is in church. <laughs> The only place where we are exercising our authority is in church. And then we leave church to go back under a system that controls our existence for the rest of the week. I mentioned as I began this word about um, speaking victory. I, I, I want to remind you, we do not, we do not lament the price of gas as though we can be stuck. We will not be stuck. We don't want it to keep on going up, but no matter where it goes, we got to go where we got to go. No matter how high it gets, I don't care if you're a janitor or you're a CEO, the blessing is on you. Glory to God. So we speak only victory, um, but we, we move on a different level, and that's called the level of influence. It all boils down to influence, I need your mind, I need you to hear this. We're going to shout in a little bit, but I need you to hear this. It's all about influence. Now, let me define influence. This is so powerful. When I saw this, this ain't in no Bible dictionary. This in, in Miriam Webster. Here's what it says. Influence is the power to produce an effect without the apparent exertion of force. I'm going to read it again. I, I love it so much. I was getting a little bit with scriptural definitions of that. But when I saw this, I said, you know what? This, this boy was anointed. Influence is the power to produce an effect without the apparent exertion of force. Now, this is antithetical to the world system because the way the world influences is by aggression. It's by force. It's by manipulation. But in the kingdom, we... We, uh, we make things happen without exerting force. Oh, God. All right, let me, let me make this make some sense to you. Um, before I do that, this became a challenge in our text. This was a challenge for the disciples because here it is now. Jesus is about to leave. I'm in our text now in Acts chapter 1. Jesus is about to, he about to get up out of here, and they're saying, hold on. You told us you were the Messiah. And based on what we read, the Messiah, he is the one who's going to set us free from the tyranny of our oppressors. He's going to free us from the bondage that we're in. Based on what we read, if you are him, you're supposed to exert some force and pull down Caesar and tear up Pilate and shoot Herod. That's what we want you to do and set up a new kingdom and put us in charge. Our mindset is that if you are God, I shouldn't be broke no more. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. If, if you are who you say you are and you're getting ready to leave, hold on, Jesus, where are you going? I still sick. Jesus, wait, no, you can't. You mean you gain a sin? Right. You gain a sin? Don't you see my condition has not yet changed? Yeah, Lord, Lord. God, oh man. You, yes, yes, let me read it. Let me read it. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They say, Jesus, hold on. Verse number six, hold on. I hold on. This Holy Ghost, is this, this the thing that can, that can choke Herod? Is this the thing that can cause all the centurions to fall down dead? Because if this ain't that, we ain't on this run. 
You giving me Holy Ghost, and, and I still gonna be sick. Preach that, sir. See, and two thousand plus years later, we still want a God that comes into our house, slaps our husband upside the head, and make him treat us white. Preach that, sir. We still want a God that will go to the car dealership and purchase the car for us and pull it up in our driveway. No, sorry. We'll go to road traffic. Oh, uh, no. Go to J.S. Johnson, them. Insure, voice, insure it. License it up. Give me some plates on it. And then pull it up, no, so stop to the car wash, make sure it's shiny, put some tire shine on it, make sure it look good, and then bring it to me and say, see your keys right here. That's the God that we want. See, we don't understand that the kingdom of God works by influence. He says, no, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. No, I want that. I want the stuff. He says, no, I'm giving you better than the stuff. I'm coming. I'm coming. You also with me? Let's, let's walk down this road. The, their whole concept was, Jesus, come and deal with the things. Jesus, I want you to... Take the cancer out of my body. Take the HIV and the AIDS out. That's what I want you to do. And he says, no, what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. No, I don't want the Holy Ghost. I want my situation fixed. Let me show you some scriptures. Because, uh, I can't read this line. Jesus was really telling them that I want to show you how to have dominion in the earth not by force, but by influence. So you must understand that everything that we do by the Spirit of God is accomplished in the supernatural realm. Everything that we do is accomplished in the supernatural realm. Everything that we do is accomplished in the supernatural. And then it manifests in the natural. Everything that we see naturally was created from something that occurred in the supernatural in the realm that we do not function in. Without the Holy Ghost, you have no authority in that realm. Okay, let's give some scriptures. Romans 4 and 17. We taught on this for a long time. Look at what it says here. Romans 4 and 17 says this. It, it, um, it's, there we go. Uh, as it's written, we know not part before him whom ye believe, even God who quickened the dead. I want to go from right here. And does what? And does what? And call it those things which be not as though they were. God calls things that be not as though they already are. Um, I told you this, this word call, we taught on this. The word call means to summon. You can't summon what does not exist. Call, that word call means to summon. We have supernatural powers like God to call things into existence that exists, but in another dimension. Whatever it is that you need, it already exists. Say that, it already exists. It already exists. I touched this on Friday morning in our prayer session. It, uh, there's nothing that you can need that has to be created for you. Oh my goodness. Why? Because when God rests at the end of creation, he, he said, I'm done with this. I have created all I need to create. Now you have dominion. There's nothing more that needs to be created. Everything that needs to be created has already been created. We just need to summons it. From a supernatural realm to a natural realm, but we can't do that outside of the Holy Ghost. Let me show you something else. Go to um, Hebrews 11 and 3. I can almost preach. Almost. By faith we understand this is an NLT, that the entire universe was formed at God's command. Watch this. That what we, let's read it together. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Read. 
What we now see did not come from anything that can be seen. Everything that we see now that we can touch, it manifests from a realm that we cannot see. The realm that we cannot see is the supernatural realm. It's the spiritual realm. But natural people cannot function in that spiritual realm. We need a connector to get to that spiritual realm. And the connector is the Holy Ghost. Now, I, I, we are so used to Holy Ghost messages being about this. It is that now. We'll tongue you to pieces. No, we, we understand the power of speaking in the Holy Ghost and all this kind of stuff like that. But there's another dimension to the Holy Spirit that the church has yet to tap into which is the key dimension to the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's keep on going. I'll give you one more scripture, then we, can, then we can get ready to think about shouting. All right, so regardless of what you've been told, we have the ability to function with the same kind of influence as God. God calls things that be as though they were. Hebrews 11 says this, that everything that we see, God made it from what we don't see. And we have that same kind of power. I'm almost there to make this all come together. Uh, First Corinthians chapter 2, verse number uh, 14. In the contemporary English version, I want you to see this. That's why only someone who has God's spirit can understand spiritual blessings. Anyone who doesn't have God's spirit thinks these blessings are foolish. Persons who have the Holy Ghost understand functioning in the spiritual dimension. Understands the authority that we have in the spiritual dimension. People that don't have the Holy Spirit says it's foolishness. Okay. All right. So let me pick on somebody who I spoke to yesterday. I spoke to somebody um, on, I think it was Thursday night. They called me on Thursday night, Thursday evening, and says, um, y'all don't forget who it is. I use their voice. Pastor. Pastor, I, am, I have a meeting tonight, and I need you to pray. <laughs> That's my best version of the voice. I need you to pray. So, encourage them, stand in faith, declare the word of God. This going gonna, this gonna to go well. So, I spoke to them yesterday, and they said to me, Pastor, different things of pastor. <laughs> you wouldn't believe what happened. I was driving to the meeting, and I did what you says. I was driving, watch this, praying in the Holy Ghost. So I was praying, and I was decreeing, and I was declaring the word of God, and I was praying in the Holy Ghost. See, see, pause here. To someone that don't understand spiritual things, that's stupid. You are going to a meeting. What you should be doing is rehearsing your notes in your mind. You should be going over figures. Come on, Denzel. You should be going over figures in your mind. Remember, okay, I need to say this. I don't need to say that. I don't need to do it. I need, I, I, what, I, and you, need, you should be strategizing on the right. That's common sense. We don't function with common sense. The text says our sense ain't common. Oh, God. So you're driving to this meeting, and you're driving there, and you read Why? Because you don't know what to say, no how. You don't know the right buttons to press. You don't know. Glory to God. I have gone to meetings to talk about projects, and then I'm spending the rest of the, the whole meeting praying for the person's son. Because the Spirit of God knows how to direct you in a certain way. Glory to God knows how to move you. I went one time for one. Tens of and friends meeting this person. One is to sing somewhere. And uh, the brother was in the meeting like this. And, and, and he was just doing this the whole time. I said, what's happening, sir? He says, no, I'm, I'm all right. He's got a major, major headache. I had it all morning. But I'll be good. I said, can I pray for you? My God. I, said, oh, I guess so. I said, give me a hand. Let pakunde la be healed now in Jesus' name. He says, wow. You think I ain't get that job? <laughs> Just like that, Sabrina, it was that simple. See, see, we have an influence. But 
we don't trust the influence that we have and we go to natural I'm trying to get us from relying on our ability from relying on our giftings and start depending on the Spirit of God which has been given to us which is the spiritual endowment to work from a, an environment from an atmosphere from an existence that you cannot see but the book says everything that you see, Brent, was made from what cannot be seen. Okay, keep on going. Keep on going. So, this whole idea, let me read it again, what it says in the CV. I'll read it again one more time. He says, he says, that's why only someone that has God's Spirit or has the Holy Ghost can understand spiritual blessings. So those of us that have the Spirit of God, stop trying to explain to people who don't have it what you're doing. It, it, it ain't going to make no sense. When, when everything says you need to hurry to the doctor, and you say, no, I can't go yet, because I ain't talked to God about this. Ain't nothing to talk to God about. You see what's happening in your body? You better run to the doctor. No, the doctor going to be there. Let me take a moment here and let me hear from heaven. But see, we understand spiritual blessings, and it is the spiritual blessing. Uh, Ephesians 1 and 3, Ephesians 1 and 3 says this, um, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath what? Who hath what? Who hath what? With what? He has blessed us with all, oh my God, he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. What he has given you, this is where we get confused. This is where they were confused, in, and the disciples were confused in Acts. They thought they were blessed with all natural blessings. Okay, one more time. This is where they were confused in Acts 1, the text that we read. They thought that God blessed them with all physical blessings. That is what he blessed us with. He blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Yes. Now we're in trouble because we're lazy. We want natural blessings, Janiya. We want the things to be natural. And God says, if I bless you with natural blessings, you'll never function in faith. If I gave you everything you need naturally, you will never move in faith. And he says, without faith, you can't please me. So what I'll do is I'll give you spirit, I'll give you spiritual blessings that is going to force you to activate faith, glory to God, to pull from a spiritual dimension into the natural dimension which you need. If it all was natural, Meredith, we would never pray. We would never walk by faith, Leo, because we wouldn't need to walk by faith for. You got what you need. But no, what I've done, I've tucked it into the dimension, into the spiritual dimension, and what I'll do, I'll give you the Holy Ghost that allows you to access that dimension. Now, this is why persons that turn a blind eye or are ignorant or are not interested in the Holy Ghost, they are at an obvious disadvantage because they only function in the dimension that they can see. And if you, oh, if you are functioning in a dimension which you can see, that means you are governed by this world's laws. I just heard that so loud. If you are only functioning based on what you can see, if you are, and you could go to heaven, you know. You could be saved and not walk in what I'm talking about. Say it again. You can be a Christian and not walk in what I am talking about. You can be a Christian and go to heaven. And if that's what your goal is, to die and go to heaven, this ain't the church for you. Because our job is to live and bring heaven to earth. Those who want to die and go to heaven, you can be uncomfortable in this church because we have an assignment to fulfill what Jesus told the disciples to pray. He says, pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So watch this. If you don't have the capacity, if you choose, not don't, if you choose not to have the capacity to believe that we pull from the spiritual dimension into the natural dimension, that means you will always be under the authority of this world's system whoever runs the world will run your life and it makes sense why 
I'm getting ready to preach now. I'm almost there now. It makes sense then why persons trip when the F and M lose. It makes sense now why they go crazy when the PLP get votes out. Because all of their contract came because there was a campaign worker. They are so in bondage to the world system that they need this system to support them. Come on here. Let me go across the water. That's why they get so upset when the Democrats win or when the Republicans win because they are so locked in to a natural system. They become in bondage to what happens in this system. But we are from another country. Glory to God. We live under another set of rules. And when you understand the authority that we have and we function in a system that is not seen, it don't matter who in charge. Someone shout, I'm recession proof. Because I got the Holy Ghost. Shout, I'm election proof. Because I got the Holy Ghost. Say, I'm hurricane proof. Because I got the Holy Ghost. Say, I'm disease proof. Because I got the Holy Ghost. Say, I'm COVID proof. Because I got the Holy Ghost. I need seven of y'all to stand up and shout and turn around and sit back down. Glory. Glory. Glory to God. Sit down. I took my time walking through this because I need you to understand this whole thing about spiritual blessings. But the connector to you to the natural dimension and the spiritual dimension is the Holy Ghost. That's the bridge. That's the bridge from what exists up there in the supernatural dimension. And this dimension, that's, see, that's why, that's why, you know, that, that God didn't make man form him of the dust and say, get up. Because he could have done the same thing he did with everything else. Let there be. He could have said, let there be. He says, no, I don't want to do that. I can't do that because... I need this to have dominion. So, so in order for this to have dominion, can, can I walk a little, little deep? Bef- in, in, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible says that the Spirit of God ho- hovered. It hovered. <laughs> that means it formed a dome over the earth. It like... It, it, it hovered over the waters. It, it was doming over the waters. Yeah, the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. When God made man, he blew into his nostrils the spirit. And after he blew into his spirit, his nostrils the spirit of God, he says now where the spirit of God was just doming by itself, now you dome. You don't see it. Genesis 1 and 28 uh, 26, I think it is, somewhere in there, he says, let us make man and let him have dominion. So where the spirit of God was, was having dominion before there was man, once man was created, God took that spirit of God that was having dominion over the earth and he took it and he blew it into man. He says, now you have the power to have dominion. When man sinned, he lost the spirit of God and now the earth started tripping out. Because when there was, oh my goodness, can I keep on going? In before man sinned, there were no hurricanes. Hurricanes is the earth trying to correct itself. See, because when man lost dominion, watch this man, oh God. Say this, Marisha. Before man sinned, Barracuda was in poison. When, when funds used to pray for food, and I didn't understand it, man. Funds would pray for food. Every once in a while, he'd say this, and God, bless this food that we don't experience the corruption from the earth. I didn't understand that my daddy, who only had a third grade education, I didn't know what he was saying, but it started to make sense after I get a little older. He says, from the corruption of the earth. 
has fun somehow realized with his third grade education that before there was the fall of man, you could eat, and you don't have to pray for no food. We pray for food for the blessing was on it. Glory to God. You don't have to bless your food, and it was already blessed, but now it's in a corrupt system. Is this too much? Hurricanes and why God has allowed tornadoes. We did. God is so loving. Why we have hurricanes? We do that. Because that's the earth correcting itself. If the, if the tornado don't happen here, something worse can happen over there. It's, it's, it's the earth recalibrating because we decided to give over our dominion. But then Jesus came, 1 John 3 and 8 says this, that for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he would destroy the works of the yes. devil. So everything that the devil put in motion, I talking too fast? I excited. Everything that the devil put in motion in the Garden of Eden, Jesus came to, to correct that. Now what we see in Acts chapter 1 is the completion of the correction where he says, now let me give you the Holy Ghost. Because ultimately what Adam lost was the Holy Ghost. He lost the power to have dominion. And, and we have, I'm, I've been Pentecostal all my life. And Pentecostal experiences taught us that you can speak in tongues, that you can be exuberant, that you can run, jump, and shout. And every once in a while, they'll tell you you can lay on the sick and the sick recover, but anybody ever recovered. But they would tell you those kind of things. Not in my experience. Not in my experience. They tell you that you cast out devils and every once in a while somebody would. Don't do it. Just one time, man. Uh, every once in a while you have. Well, <laughs> well, a little demon manifests and you see you cast a demon out. And you see the person next to you, they're still bad ways. They ain't unchanged. The Bible says, how can they believe in that which they have not heard? So some preacher got to tell us that the Holy Ghost is the mind of God. The Holy Ghost is the ability to function as God functioned in the earth. Now I end with this. I promise you I end it now. I end it now. I will end with a whole scripture as though I preach it all over again. Can I do it? Let's go here. Oh, oh I leave what's up. Oh, this so, is so good. Can I put this little piece that you leave out? Okay, okay. Ah, the Holy Ghost, let me see how, you, how much. The Holy Ghost, to me, moves us from being beneficiaries to benefactors. And this is where the Lord said it to me. I was preaching to Pastor Dino's church, and the Lord gave me this. I had to look it up because I, I don't. To, I still don't know how insurance work. I don't even try to understand it. That's why I got married. I had Robin deal with that. I go there to the place and get him my card. When I go to the doctor visit, they say, you don't beat your deductible. What is that? <laughs> to this day, I still don't know what the deductible is. Don't try to tell me. I don't want anybody walking me out of church. Pastor, let me explain. I don't want to know. I just need her to know. I said, tell her. I said, Robert, I go on the doctor. They say, Naya ain't deducted. <laughs> Seven but deduct, and so I got to pay $250. I understand. I just paid a bit. <laughs> now, and that, now, there's a downside to that, because there have been times when I didn't meet the deductible, or I paid for stuff, and they reimbursed, and they sent it to Robert. See ya? Because I remember one time I said, Robin, I said, when I went to the eye place, they said they can send a reimbursement. You know any money, any reimbursement? And Robin said, yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> what is that about? 
beneficiaries, right. Beneficiaries and benefactors. She definitely is a beneficiary. Um, so, so I looked them up. A beneficiary, let me read it, is a person or, um, that receives help or an advantage from someone else. It's a person that receives help or an advantage from someone else. All right? That's a beneficiary. Robin Holy Ghost said to me, he says, the definition of a 21st century church is a church filled with beneficiaries. That's what we see as a Holy Ghost church. A Holy Ghost church is a church where there's an anointed man of God and everybody experiencing the Holy Ghost. What you mean? Man is anointed, and this one getting healed. This one speaking in tongues. This one experiencing deliverance. This one marriage getting made whole. This one getting breakthrough. And that's a powerful church. I mean, everywhere you look, someone got a testimony. Boy, God did this for me. Boy, God did this for me. Ooh, boy, pastor, you wouldn't believe what God do this week. This sounded like life was upset. Boy, pastor, boy, this week, my God, Jesus, you wouldn't believe what God do for me this week. That's a church filled with beneficiaries. And that's what we call a Holy Ghost church. That's what we call a kingdom movement. A kingdom movement, Dwayne, is a church filled with people who have a testimony of what God did for them. And that's what we are going after. We are zealous for being the kind of church where I got a testimony. You got a testimony. You got a testimony. God did this for me. And God opened the door. Oh, and God blessed Sonia. Oh, he didn't just stop there. He also blessed Sabrina. Oh, but God is not a respecter of person. He also went ahead and he made a miracle for Jody. Ooh, but he didn't stop at Jody, boy. He saw bread down there. And he touched bread and healed bread left leg. And not only bread left leg, he touched bread in the stomach. And he moved ahead and touched Tamika head. And we celebrate that. Woo, there's a Holy Ghost church and God moving in this church. That ain't a Holy Ghost church. Jesus. That's a church filled with beneficiaries. A benefactor is someone that provides help. Or an advantage to someone else. <laughs> Can I preach this text now in four minutes? This is going to be my, 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 um, my, my key text. But I said don't do it because then I can go long. Here's it right here. And I finish. Delton, get ready. Go in the tower. We're getting ready for landing. <laughs> Acts chapter 8. He says this, and the people, God, I feel like using my church voice. Give me a key, let me use my church voice. I feel like using my church voice. That, that's why that's I really want to go to the And the people, right there. Oh, yes, God, yes, God, yeah, 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 yeah. Church voice, right, here we go. Hang on, that's my church voice now. I bought the, we bought to be a Holy Ghost church. And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing. Touch your neighbor, say hearing. I said say hearing and seeing the miracles which he did for the Bible says that there were unclean spirits, glory to God, crying with loud voice, uh, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed, and the Bible declares, and there was, hey, 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 there was, there was great joy, touch your neighbor and say joy is coming. It won't be long. Tell them joy is coming. No, I just stop right there. Joy was in the city. Now look at this thing again. Unclean spirits crying, loud voice. Came out of many that were possessed. 
Those who had, watch this, this is so crazy. Paul says, talks about being paralyzed. Right? Lame in this text, when you read it in this context, lame means, watch this, this is crazy. Naya, lame meant maim. Ask me what maim mean. Ask me. Maim mean they were missing body parts. Now, you can't tell me that in Holy Ghost Church. They were missing body parts. Philip, the deacon, prayed for them, and hands were going back. So the book says, feet were growing back. That's like ridiculous going on. Jesus. That's Holy Ghost 6.0. I finished Delta. Verse 14. I didn't preach a voice for this. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. This is crazy. So they have miracles <laughs> and good word. Miracles, because the Bible says they received the word. So that means they had miracles and they had faith. When you receive the word, that means you got faith. They got faith and miracles. Peter pulls up in the next verse. Go to verse 15. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Hold on. Hold on. Limbs were growing back. Paralyzed people were getting healed. Demons were being cast out. And Peter gets in and say, Something ain't right. We have a church filled with beneficiaries. And Peter says, Philip, you did well. But we have not been called to create an audience. We've been called to build an army. <sighs> he was building an audience, Jody. But Peter says, no, that's what we called to do. I'm glad that all these people's lives are being touched. See, what happens is when more people get healed and people experience the power of God, then Denzel becomes great. Jesus. Oh, we got a mighty man of God. Lord, Bishop Denzel Antonio, you ever meet him? Oh, that boy powerful. And he is. But Peter says, that ain't it, boy. Bible says, in, in verse, verse number 16, it says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them. They were only baptized. They was just saved. None of them had the Holy Ghost. But they looked better than most of our churches. Oh, God. I want you to see where we are. In our churches, nobody getting healed. No demons getting cast out. No limbs growing back, and we claim it to be Holy Ghost Church. They had all this manifestation, Jeremy, and the Bible says, none of them had the Holy Ghost. And Peter is showing us, Philip, with all this that happening, this ain't enough. This ain't enough. And verse number next one, and he laid their hands on them. And they received the Holy Ghost, and, and that's when Peter had his permission to make his exit. But here's what's crazy. Here's what's crazy. There was one little crooked boy there whose name was Simon, and Simon was saved too. He was a sorcerer. He got saved and was comfortable in the church, just saved, but had a bad heart. Read this text when you get a chance. And when the Holy Ghost came, it was so mighty when the Holy Ghost came. Philip, Simon says, I want to buy this. Yeah. I want to purchase this because I want the power to make people benefactors too. I'm saying, let's play that and let's go. I'm saying to us, living outside of the Holy Ghost is a life that is still under 
subjection, under bondage, under containment, because you cannot release all that God has called you to release. Peter shows us in this text, he says, Philip, they have power, they see in power, and the Bible says they had joy in the city. He was happy. And it's a sad place to be in when you got joy outside of the Holy Ghost. Because Lillian, joy outside of the Holy Ghost will make you stuck. And I'm seeing that in so many churches today. And we are stuck. Because our church growing. Jesus. People opening businesses. People being blessed. Things happening. And so we reach. Peter said this again. This is not it. Until we are being filled with the Spirit of God and move from being beneficiaries to being benefactors. Every one of you in this room, this is not on the list. Give me this text, please, um, uh, Cassie, and we go going home. Mark 16 says this. I want you, if you are a believer, lift your hands for me, please. If you're a believer, lift your hand. Mark 16, verse 17. All right, put your hand down. And wherever you see them, I want you to put me. And where you see they, say I. Let's read this. Ready, go. And these signs shall follow me, because I believe. Let's do it again. And these signs, signs shall, shall follow me, because I, I believe. believe. In my name, I shall cast out devils. I shall speak with new tongues. Go to verse 18. I shall take up serpents. And if I drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt me. I shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That's when you become a benefactor. You become a benefactor where lives are being changed through you. We must move for what God has done for us to what God has done through us. That's when we become a benefactor. Where's no more? And I'm not listen. I'm not talking about no concession. Where when I give to the poor and I I help my neighbor. No, I no. I talking about spiritual power. I talking about who you lay hands on and they got healed. Who you cast devils out of? Where you use that spiritual power to make things happen in the earth because there's more in you. Being spiritual is being in a place where God uses you to get his will done in the earth. Ephesians 5 and 1, we imitate God. The power to imitate God is the Holy Ghost. That we do exactly what God did in the earth. Who's the last person that was touched by the power of God through you? Who's the last person who was touched by the power? No, I know you help people. I know you gave that person a ride when it was raining last week. Thank you. Thank you. That's what saved people do. And because we save, we're supposed to do that. We're supposed to give. We're supposed to visit the prison. That's what saved people do. Holy Ghost filled people take it to the next level. Because Holy Ghost people, Holy Ghost filled people, we have what is called dunamis. Power that is able to reproduce itself. So we have the ability not just to give that person a ride, glory to God, but to change their life. Yeah. Every eyes closed, every head is bowed. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary pure and holy tried and true And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you.
lift those hands and surrender, saying, Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Sanctuary, sanctuary. Father, for those that desire the baptism of the Holy Ghost with this new revelation, with this new understanding, I pray, Father God, for infilling to take place all around this house. And I pray for an understanding and awakening to the power of influence that's on the inside of us. We remove from just being recipients of the blessing. Recipients of the power of God. To now being the donors, being the one that releases anointing in the earth. Breathe on us, oh God. Breathe on us afresh. Let the fire now to be conduits of your power come alive on the inside of us. And we thank you for the challenge of this word. And that from this point, we'll never again be the same. For we accept that assignment now.